Today, my intent is to finally get some solar hooked up to this thing. It's been running on just utility battery mode for, oh, weeks now because I've been too busy to do anything with it. So I do actually already have some 10 gauge THHN run in from my garage, which is on the other side of that board there. So it's going to re rank through my garage and EMT eventually out the back of my garage and then out to the solar panels for now I'm just running a temporary wiring setup but either way I do need to go through my garage so I decided I'd do that first as per the NEC any PV lines have to be in metallic conduit while inside of a structure basically any kind of house or office building I did actually run a pipe nipple through the wall so it is completely metal all the way through the wall, the box on the other side of the wall is metal. It's all metal basically as required. I'm going to run some three quarter inch flex metallic conduit from there down on my solar wall here and kind of somewhere in this vicinity. Ideally I would have a metal actual DIN rail box but I wanted something that had a door that I could easily open and that wasn't too expensive and most of the metal boxes are quite a bit more expensive than these ABS ones are so it'll do the job and I've already pre-drilled and installed a couple of FMC or flex connectors that are squeeze type into the box through a nice anti-short bushing there and then I will exit the box from the bottom with also three quarter inch flex that will run over toward the inverters. Got the box mounted to the wall here just below my solar assistant display and I had the ground wire up there. I don't know if you can see it or not. So next I'm going to run some actual conduit. wanted to make a note about making sure to use anti-short bushings when you're running this flexible metal conduit. It's not required by code but if you don't want to risk nicking your PV wires. It is recommended and they're very cheap. Don't be dumb like me and face your screws the wrong direction so you can't get to them without using a stubby or a silly tool like this right angle adapter for my impact. Sometimes it pays to have tools to make up for your mistakes. I have the flex connected here all the way up there. I don't have it clamped yet because I'm thinking it'll be easier to pull the wires through before it's clamped. There's a lot of little movement available in the actual conduit while pulling the wires through. I definitely do not recommend running wires by pushing them through FMC especially while they're already connected to the actual end box that you're trying to get to. Lesson learned, learn from my mistakes got her through. And yes, the green wire is actually for ground. I want to make sure that I had all of the actual metallic conduit grounded to my house ground. So I'm going to run another ground wire out over to one of my other panels here where I can hook it in to the actual ground for the house with the ground rods outside. Got it all wired up on this side here, so I just need to put the cover on that. Down here, still making progress. I think I'm going to run flex down here, along here, and then terminate at a metal box down here, and then run half inch from there up into the inverter. Cutting flex with a reciprocating saw is not a clean proposition. I'm probably going to end up having to buy a portable bandsaw or at least have the excuse to buy a portable bandsaw. I've decided to run the wiring for both MPPTs even though I only have one string currently just to save myself some time later. So I have a metal box here with two half inch flex and one three quarter inch flex coming in. It's kind of ridiculous overkill but for some reason they have on the inverter two half inch cutouts for it so I figured hey at least it'll look cool right 
real endurance by their wire and 500 foot spools. It's also a lot cheaper per foot that way. Unfortunately, I ran out of straps to hold it down. So right now it's being held with a strategic screwdriver. I'm sure that meets code. And I progressed over here. I did end up grinding this box separately because I can't trust any kind of ground to happen because of the plastic box that I chose to use. So essentially I'm just using the green wire to ground the box to the box to the box to the box all the way out to the solar array at this point. Well, I also ran out of the gray screw on anti-short bushings, so shouldn't really be an issue. They're not required for only two conductors anyway, and it's a straight run, so there's no curves to wear on the insulation. Got some nice ferrules going on. About to connect it up. Yeah, I got them in there. And those itty bitty lovely black tiny screws that love to strip out. Got those in there too. Now I need to put a strap or two on that and tidy up my wiring a bit. And then we can go ahead and work on that fun part. Here's where I'm at so far. I have a surge protection device on the right. Fuses in the middle and two breakers on the left. I'm only going to bother setting up one string right now, so mostly just taking up space here currently in the box for the second breaker. Uh, as far as I can tell, for the SPD, it might be a little bit tricky to wire, so it might take me a little bit of time here to figure it out. Well, it looks like a little bit of a rat's nest because I was trying to keep it a little bit extra length in case I need to move things around in the future or something else like that. I think I got it wired right. So I have PV coming in on the upper right, going into the fuse on the positive side and out of the fuse on the positive side, going into the breaker, coming out of the breaker and going to both the SPD as well as the inverter, and the same for the negative. So from what I can tell from the research I've done, that's how it's supposed to be wired even though you do have two wires coming out of the bottom of the breaker, which isn't something I'm a real big fan of. If anyone thinks I've done this wrong, please let me know. It's my first time trying to wire up a SPD like this. Well, I think I've gotten as far as I can get this evening here, at least. Still got to put a few things back together here, but I want to test the input voltage when the sun comes up and make sure that I don't have anything cross-wired and no sparks are flying and no welding happens, right? That's the goal. <laughs> so we'll see what happens when the sun comes up. I've had this running in this configuration for a few days now with solar coming in every day, so it seems to be working pretty well, so I must have wired at least mostly correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and put the cover on and hopefully not take it off until I add another string of solar. As this box didn't come with enough slot covers for empty spaces, I'm putting in the hardware for the second string I plan to add now just to keep dust out of everything more than anything else. I got it all nice and neat and labeled. Next up, getting this strapped down so it is not being retained only by the code compliant screwdriver. All right, I am back a few days later. Got some straps, ignore my mess. I'm in the middle of a solar assistant debacle. That is the topic for another video. It's gonna be a spicy one, most likely. And I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this conduit secured properly, finally. Got it all secured. I do actually kind of miss the code compliant screwdriver, but I guess this is more secure. If you like nerdy little tools like I do, this is kind of a neat little Chinese thing. It's a combination mini multimeter as well as a non-contact voltage sensor for both AC and DC. So I got it all shut down right now, but I have my temporary grid power still connected, so... 
beeps to warn you there. And then, of course, if you try it anywhere else, that is off. Nada. And you can still use it to uh, read voltages and things like that if you want to as well. Unfortunately, due to the paint on the inverter, I'm not getting a good ground to the rest of the metallic conduit here. So I'm going to need to run a little bit of conduit between that box over to that box and up into the panel. I'm just going to land it on the ground bus on the uh, panel itself. And that should give me a good ground for all of this conduit. I got my conduit cut to length here. This time, instead of using the squeeze type of connector, I'm using the screw in type of connector. These are kind of nice in this type of conduit because you can just screw them into the end and you don't have to use a special bushing or anything like that. So they end up just looking like that. So, quick and easy if you get this type of conduit. Got that done. Now to run the ground wire. And then I'm finally done with the solar side of things for now. Got the ground wire run. All the way back to the panel here. It's overkill. To be honest with you, really all you need is that chunk of conduit to really give it a ground path. But I figured, hey, for three feet of wire, I'll go ahead and just run it all the way home. Got her all wrapped up here. And now, I'm going to test and make sure that I actually do have a good ground to the actual conduit itself. Because that's pretty critical for both lightning protection as well as making sure these surge protection devices work correctly. So I have one lead of my little toy here plugged into the ground bus and we're going to test and see. Yep. 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 And yep. Yeah, good deal. That wraps up finally connecting solar panels to the system. Short of putting the cover back on that box, but I did actually add a couple more panels today, so I want to make sure that the voltages are correct when the sun comes up. So I'm going to leave it off for now. The inverter's back up and running, and we got the off grid deep freeze running off of it as well as the solar assistant pie down there for now and we'll see what happens when the sun comes up